Hello and welcome back to Aquaria, uh, part 13. We're uh, we're hanging out in Lee's cave. Yeah, I'm putting the crab armor back on. I'm Breadmaster. And I'm Gibby Jones. <laughs> and we're gonna swim. Yep. So we're gonna keep going, I guess, wet westward or eastwards? Yes. Uh, something about 2D games always kind of trips me up when doing cardinal di directions. Because it's to the right. Alright, so you have... You have Boyfriend, and then you have the Piranha. Mm-hmm. As your two pets. He's not a pet. He's totally a pet. Look, just I, bet because... they re I bet they reused the uh, swimming like code and they just applied it to boyfriend <laughs> no I think it's I think it's more I mean, it's more sophisticated than that I think because uh, the pets will automatically teleport to you if you get too far away also it's, I think this belonged to Lee that would make sense explains how he, he got here in the first place it is kind of funny how it's like, there was a strange fish. <laughs> he seems to be trapped in something. I will save him. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, oh no, I have made a mistake. He's got gills now. It's fine. Well, he has got, he's got something. Verse gills. Oh boy. Oh man. That thing is ugly. This this area of the game, or, or of the veil in particular, is kind of empty. There's only like two treasures in this entire uh, area. Yeah. Like the stone head was the first one. And we'll get the other one shortly. It, it feels like we're moving through this pretty fast. I mean, I don't know how... How far we are in the game? Yeah, but it feels like we're moving through it pretty fast. We are a little over halfway through. Oh. At the very least. <laughs> yeah. Still, I do like how the veil is more visually distinct from the other areas. Mm -hmm. like, like, just apart from the fact that there is a surface to the water. Yeah, that is kind of cool. There's this area off to the very far side, but it's, it's too dark in that spot to see through. Mm -hmm. We'll come back. I need some glow sticks. So imagine you being like a, you know, underwater explorer, and then suddenly some weird mermaid creature comes up and gives you gills. After like, almost drowning you, and then kissing you? Yeah, like, that's, that's pretty strange. I mean, there would be a few, there would be a few moments of like, oh yes, I can finally, you know, live under water, blah 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 blah, and then I'd be like, hey, I can't go home. Oh, we don't know if he can't breathe out uh, air again. Also, check this place out. That seems very industrial. The Sun Temple. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Steampunk fish. Yep. And jet propelled snails. There's that symbol uh, that we actually saw before. Uh, I think it was last video, actually. <laughs> it's a mola mola. Last video, when we st uh, head or headed to the Vale, um, there was that moment where Nyjah talked about the sensation of burning alive. Mm -hmm. And that cutscene had that symbol on fire, but... 
Yeah. Creepy. And I think these are the people who built it. One thing about the enemies in this area, apart from them all being mechanical, is that they don't drop any ingredients. Probably because yeah. they are mechanical. I mean, that makes sense. It's kind of peaceful in here, like, they don't seem to be really that dangerous. Uh, the only really, the only really dangerous enemy in this area is those, or are those crabs, because they have an attack that will home in on you and hit you like six times. Now down here is the way forward, but it's too dark to see. Like I said, time to go get some glow sticks. What well, is a sun temple? Perhaps they have something. Here's an interesting mechanic that never really comes up anywhere else, except maybe one other place. But you can spin Niger around and create like a whirlpool effect. And you can do that with the mouse, which is kind of messy, or you just press and hold the R button, and she does it automatically. Interesting. And, and that gear in particular affects the water level. Interesting. Can you only rotate one way, or...? Um... I don't think you have... Uh, when you use the mouse, you can definitely rotate either way. Uh, There's that crab that you're talking about. Yeah. Uh... But when you use the just the R key, uh, I don't think you have control over it. That's his attack. Yeah. And and he was way off screen when he did that. Dang. Some weird crystal. You should sing a blue note. Not quite. There's something in the in the There's background in the background there that I didn't see it was well it was uh, it was I don't think it was in uh, or in a uh, mytholon the the aquarian script uh, but it did have a symbol of uh, the temple that that sunlight symbol we're assuming and the crystal it, I'm I forgot that the only gear that actually reacts is the one that that we used before. Well, that that's kind of strange. Like, it's like, why put those gears there if they aren't going to do anything? The, the only difference between the decorative gears and the one that actually does things is the one that actually does the thing doesn't rotate on its own. All the others do. Now up here, in addition to the giant sunfish in the background, which is cool, <laughs> is a skylight, letting in natural sunlight. Hmm. Here's the main puzzle of this area. It's gonna say, me smells a puzzle. Yes. We need to take the, the crystal to the sun to make something happen. So you're gonna have to lift the water again. Yep. Crab. Yeah, I, I continue to not remember that these don't do anything. They they just look pretty. <laughs> Did you know sunfish? Not the way it would have spin. <laughs> Physics. <laughs> Did you know sunfish um, supposedly secrete a some sort of chemicals that other fish uh, are attracted to? Really? Mm hmm Only thing I remember about sunfish is that they're incredibly dumb. Yeah, they they are they are really weak swimmers. They they just kind of float along with the currents. What was it? There was somebody who ranted about sunfish online. Why? <laughs> they, were, they were like, they're so stupid. I think they're cool. They're gigantic. Yeah. They're huge. 
like you'd come across one and I would probably freak out. I'd be like, ah, don't eat me. <laughs> but then they, they have like, tiny mouths wait, though. <laughs> they don't do any. They also are so slow and so dumb that uh, when they sunbathe near the surface, mm-hmm. seagulls and other birds will actually come down and peck at them and and try to eat them. Yeah, because they're dumb. Well, I think it's also a behavior by the sunfish to get parasites out of or off of them. They let the birds mm-hmm. eat the parasites, but sometimes the birds go too far. I think, in just terms of uh, area, the Sun Temple is probably one of the smallest dungeons in the game. Yeah, that makes sense. And the only reason it takes... I mean, it kind of looks like that. Yeah, the only reason it takes so long is uh, mostly this fish, puzzle. Fish wheelie. <laughs> <laughs> I love, that's such a good form. So once we put it underneath the sunlight, it starts glowing, and we can pick it up by itself. It has absorbed the sun. And now, we, it, it's a flashlight. Aha. Now the only reason you can't like blindly swim through the dark area and find the way through is because there's this door. Ah. And you need to match the song notes. And you can't do that if you can't see it. I see. So it's not like the uh, um, mountains in Pokemon and the caves in Pokemon where they're like, oh, you need a Pokemon with Flash, and you're just like, no, I don't. I have a map. It's like, I didn't, I didn't even have a map. I just blindly walked. I was like, eventually I'll make it out of here. How old were you when you did that? I don't know. 12, 13. I really didn't want to use Flash. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, because Flash was an awful move. <laughs> I'm not sure what what the purpose of all of these mechanical creatures really are, or really is. Besides being thematic? Yeah. I mean, I would assume that whoever created the Sun Temple created them to do something. Maybe they were just bored. Uh. Maybe they wanted a friend. Going breaking things. I didn't break that to be fair. In fact, I haven't changed or turned into energy form Nigel at this entire temple. Yeah, you've kept the crab armor. Mm hmm. <laughs> All the destruction is the piranha and Lee. <laughs> Such violent tendencies. <laughs> I'm not sure if the the outfit that Nyjah wears takes effect even when she's not in her default form. I don't remember if you have to be original form Nyjah to have the effect take place. And I'm not sure how I would test that really. Oh, 
bounce, bounce, bounce. <laughs> so impatient. <laughs> Hey, another gear. Yep. There's a weird, like, physics quirk with getting close to the surface of the water, in that if you just float into it, you'll launch yourself out. <laughs> Sail! <laughs> <laughs> Not sure what's up there just yet. Yeah, there's not much that I feel like I can commentate on. Yeah, uh, that... like this is kind of like just a peaceful puzzle dungeon. Yep. Which is nice. Like. Sometimes you don't want it to be all just combat, combat, combat. Sometimes you don't want to be, you know, stuck in flesh prison, Mythalus. Yeah, with weird body spaghetti. Yeah. Now that looks like a slot for the crystal, but I'm not sure how to get it in there. Music changed. Yeah. This is a danger music. Final thoughts. I think the second line was their title. Now something is making the water go up and down all the time. Which can be perilous with all these Spikes around. Spikes, yeah. Whoop. Ow. Ah! <laughs> nice. <Nice> Fortunately, <laughs> nature form is immune to them. By our powers combined. <laughs> now, see, why don't you just stay in me? There you go. <laughs> I was gonna say, why don't you stay in nature form where it's safe? <laughs> yep. Poorly. Oh, hey. Good thing you can magically teleport him anywhere you go. Yep. I wonder how that would feel. I don't know. <laughs> and I'm not sure if I want like, to contemplate imagine, it. Imagine, like, you're in the middle, you're like, oh man, I'm about to eat some really good lunch, and then suddenly. <laughs> It's like, oh man. There's a passage up up that way. It's quite hard to get to. Notice noticing the uh minor greedy aspects of the water. Oh yeah, when when you uh, jump in and out? Yeah. Turtle soup recipe. It's, uh, I think what it's it? plus three defense for 45 seconds. Wasn't it the, the giant tortoise, you know, from like the Galapagos Islands that they kept, they were like, oh, we're going to bring him and put him in a, uh, zoo to study blah 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 and every time they would just end up eating them <laughs> and they're like we can't help it they're so delicious oh man it's a, a worm it's a like furry version of those really gross worms earlier yes I believe this is the sun worm and uh, the main gimmick with him is that he'll uh, suck in and blow out the water in this area. And if you aren't in beast form, that'll push you around. I'm just trying to read this giant thing of text. Yeah, um... Transformation is almost... The transformation is almost done. Kill me and 
kill our creator? Yes. I, after the fight, I uh, take a bigger or longer look at uh, the the message. The pain is becoming unbearable. Yep. By the end of this fight, I'll have this translated. <laughs> Sometimes Possibly. the physics breaks and you get stuck in the wall. <laughs> you gotta roll out. We believe in reason. Mm hmm. So, man. Man fears. Nope, there's one more letter on man. They, right, the main man. right there for a second, uh, while Nigel was out, out of the water, the worm started pushing with uh, pushing out water, and so the physics affected her and threw her against the wall while midair. Slam. Yeah. Get slammed. The hardest part about this boss really is maintaining your positioning. Yeah. Dang, I couldn't get it all translated. Yep, most of it. I would be the worst at, like, Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> the Lumerians had left the waters of their birth, the bright, warm currents of the Vale. Awed by their new surroundings, many of them came to worship the great sphere of light, known as Sun. So they were the underwater DJs. Their adventurous spirit came new ingenuity. Huh? They learned to design and build <laughs> elaborate mechanisms to survive in the foreign environment. God who had bore them became jealous of this sacrilege, and in a blind rage, destroyed them all. Oh wow. Yeah. That's dark. Yeah. In the sun form, I gained the ability to focus the verse into rays of light, bringing clarity to shadowed depths. And this is our last main or second to last actually form of the game it's only it's only real purpose is to light up dark areas how useful yep also this entire race were you know sun bros praise the sun mm hmm And from that cutscene, we can assume that this message was from the guy who turned into the worm. How, so how many races is that that were destroyed by some sort of creator? Um, so far, like, all of them? <laughs> I would say it's like much safer to be atheist in this world, <laughs> but even then, if you're atheist, you're gonna get killed by your god. Yep. So, uh. So, remember, kids, worship with all of your might. <laughs> next Otherwise, time. Otherwise, you might be eaten by a fish god. <laughs> next time, we're gonna uh, go back into the Sun Temple, actually, and uh, explore some Shine of the pits. rays of light. Yep. Haha. -ha. We'll see you next time. See ya!